it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks and today we're making an amazing homemade coconut cream pie. This recipe is in our volume two cookbook. My recipe tells you to pre-bake your pie crust and toast your coconut before you start your pie. I'm gonna let my pie crust bake while the coconut is toasting, and that way it won't take it quite as long to pre-bake. We're gonna start off with getting our coconut on a sheet pan. So you're gonna start out, you're gonna toast about a cup and a half of coconut because you're going to decorate the top with it a little, and you're going to put it in the pie. So I just usually toast about a half bag. It's so sticky, I've got to rinse my hands. That baker's plate coconut is so moist. It is so delicious. We're going to go ahead and slide this in the oven. Now, I tell you to bake it until it's golden brown. I don't tell you how long, because you have to watch it, okay? We're going to go ahead and slide this in my 350 degree oven. And I'm going to leave room for my pie crust on the other side. I got a refrigerated pie crust because I love them. I think they're delicious and they're fun because they're easy to spread out and put in your pie plate. And you get to feel like you're really baking. <laughs> If you make your own pie crust, you need to watch my pie crust video that I just posted a few weeks ago. And make sure you refrigerate it before you roll it out and put it in your pie plate. So easy when you do it this way. So I'm just going to use this and I'm going to prick the crust. I'm going to prick it around the sides just a little. And we're going to pre-bake this. We're going to get it in the oven with our coconut. Once our coconut's toasted, then we'll leave that pie crust in there, turn it up to 375, and get it nice and toasty, golden brown. We're going to start off melting a half stick of butter in our batter bowl in the microwave. And while that's melting, I'm going to separate my eggs. You're going to be using four eggs, and we're going to be making a meringue. So you're going to need yellows in one and whites in another. I'm going to put my yellows in here so I can beat them. So we're going to separate these four eggs. Our butter's melted and our eggs are separated. We're not going to need these whites for a while, so I'm going to sit them over here. But we will need these egg yellows. But I'm going to add the sugar next. We're going to be adding three quarter cups of sugar, and this is a half cup. And I'm just going to add about another half of that. That's three quarters. And you don't have to be exact with the pie. Matter of fact, if you want to reduce it, if you're a diabetic, you can. And of course, you can use Splenda to do this pie as well, as long as it's the baking kind. All right, now we are going to beat these eggs, the yellows. And add them to our sugar and butter. You wanna always put your sugar in first because your butter might be a little warm. And you don't want it to scramble your eggs. Now we're going to use a whole can of evaporated milk. That's 12 ounce can. Always shake it really good before you use it. And I like to just use these old fashioned openers and open up my can. Thank you. 
when you pour, make your pour spout, you want to make a smaller one on the top so that it gets enough air to pour well. All right, we're going to check this coconut, and you're supposed to stir it as it's toasting, okay? If you don't, then it will get really brown around the edge, and then the rest of it won't toast before the other burns. So you really need to take it out of the oven. And use something and move this coconut from the edge. It looks pretty already, but you want it to be a little... You know, you want all of it to get a little toasty. Boy, does it add to the flavor of your coconut cream pie. It's so much better than just throwing in your coconut into your uh, pudding mix if you toast it. We're going to beat this meal in with this sugar mixture. The recipe, you really need a cup of water, but we're only going to put in a half because we're going to use the other half to uh, stir our cornstarch up in so that it gets in there without getting lumpy. So you go ahead and put in the half cup and then you're gonna use really cold water for the cornstarch. So I'm gonna get it out of the refrigerator. You're gonna put in three tablespoons of cornstarch. Now you can use flour and do the same thing, but you gotta use twice as much flour. And I personally like the cornstarch for coconut cream better because it cooks up clear and it makes a prettier pie to me. So we're just gonna whisk this together. The colder the water, the better the cornstarch blends in there. Now, I've gotten a couple of messages lately about their pudding being lumpy and they think it's their egg. It's not the egg. It's because you are cooking your pudding too long before you take it out and whisk it well because the cornstarch, and especially if you use flour, will settle down to the bottom of your bowl and then when you go to mix it up, it's lumpy. So follow my directions well. Make sure you don't cook it all too fast. If you half a recipe, make sure that you half the cooking times in the microwave before you whisk. That's all there is to it. So simple. Now the first time I put this in the microwave, I microwave it for three minutes. My microwave has an 1100 wattage. Everybody's is different. It takes longer for some people's and less for the others. So just use your judgment. If you've got a really powerful one, do it on two minutes to start with. If you've got a really slow one, do it on four minutes. Just use your judgment. So we're gonna microwave that for three minutes, get it out, whisk it well. Do not forget to do that or you could have some lumpy pudding. The great thing about using the microwave is that it's creamy and smooth and beautiful every time. No scorching, no standing over the stove. It is an amazing tool for puddings, custards, and lemon curd. Okay, our coconut is ready, and all this has fallen into place right on time. It looks really pretty. We'll mix it up in just a second, but I'm gonna scoot this pie crust over to the center and I'm going to turn my oven up to 375 so I can get it nice and golden brown. And go ahead and stir this up when you get it out because remember your pan is still hot. You can pile it up in a heap if you want to but just try to get the brownest part off the edges. It's all coming into play. You lay out all your stuff to start with then um, this will be a snap and you can get it all done without having to do your coconut, then do your crust, then do your pudding. It would take you three times as long to make this pie. So try to do it all at the same time. And you can do it if you lay everything out. Our three minutes is up. You can see already that it's trying to thicken around the edges a little bit. Get down along that bottom really good and stir it really good. 
and then put it back in there. Two minutes is up. Put it right here and whisk it again. on the bottom really well. It's starting to get thicker. Now make sure you cook it until it's thick and don't think it's going to thicken in the refrigerator because it won't. You cook it however long you have to until it's nice and thick. Just like you'll see it is when I get finished. I think this crust is ready to get out. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Put it on a cooling rack. And you want it to be nice and pretty like that because it's not going to be in the oven for long once you put the meringue on. And now I'm going to turn my oven back down to 350 degrees so that we can do the meringue once we have it mixed up. This is cook all it needs to cook that long. I'm going to put about three tablespoons of butter and some vanilla in it. And then we're going to add our coconut to it. So let's add a little bit of vanilla, about three more tablespoons of butter, and whisk it. Now we're going to add most of our coconut, except just enough to decorate the top of the pie. smells amazing. Now you see how hot this pudding is? And right now our pie crust is hot as well. We're going to put the pudding in the pie crust and go ahead and put it in your pie crust because your pie crust is still hot from the oven as well. And so they're about the same temperature and you're going to pour it into the pie crust. are going to start our meringue and get this in the oven. The oven is set 350 degrees and you're going to start out with five egg whites. Now we had four from the pie. I'm going to crack an extra just to make it really pretty on the top of the pie and high. Now you're going to start out in your mixer with your wire whisks if you have a stand mixer to do meringue. We are going to be using the egg whites. We're going to put those in first. Now you do not have to use five egg whites if you don't have them or you know it's not that big of a deal that your meringue is not really high to you but I like to make mine really pretty and put in the, the fifth one. Um, we're going to be using granulated sugar. I have two different recipes for meringue. One uses granulated sugar, the other one uses powdered sugar. If you use the powdered sugar one, remember it's not quite as glossy and pretty after it bakes but it does hold up well. We'll be using sugar today, granulated. I'm gonna go ahead and start turning it up. We're going to beat this at a high speed, the highest you've got. It takes at least three minutes. You're going to beat it until stiff peaks form. You can see how pretty the meringue is. We're going to get it out on our pie. I'm 
I'm going to use this large one. And you have to make sure you seal the edges really well of your pie. This meringue needs to bake in your oven for at least 20 minutes. So put your oven on 350 degrees and it should not burn at 350 degrees. and let it take its time and cook the egg and don't just broil it. So once you get it around the edges like that and you think you've got a good seal on it, it needs to be sealed. It's important for it to be sealed all the way around. Like right here, I've got cracks, so I gotta make sure and cover those cracks up. Okay, you're just gonna take a little bit of your coconut and sprinkle it on the top of the pie. Don't put too much, because you want your meringue to brown and look pretty too. Um, we're gonna get this in the oven and we're gonna put it in there at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. It's ready to take out of the oven, y'all, and it smells so good. I told you you couldn't burn it, and then I got it brown. But I do that every time with coconut. I don't know why. We're going to let it cool down, and then I'm going to let you guys see how pretty it is when you slice it. Nabbit, my meringue wheat. <laughs> I think it's because there's there's so many different opinions on it, y'all. All the egg white, and it's because part of the egg whites cook and part of them don't. And if you put your egg whites on really piping hot filling, then they start to cook against the pie, keeping it from weeping. What happened when I got this out of the oven? is there was one little spot right here that was leaking and I just picked it up. I'm going to show y'all on the table. I guess it has stopped now, but it was running. So I just poured all the liquid off of it that I could. So, it, you know, after you do your pie in a few minutes, go in there 10 minutes, 12 minutes later and just see if you, if you're getting any condensation leaking and tilt it and let it come out of the pie. You can see a couple of drops there. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and cut this thing because I'm sure it's delicious regardless, right? And like I said, there's so many opinions on it, you just don't know who's to follow. You can hear the thunder outside. Um, we're getting a storm right now, we're going to. Cut this wonderful pie. Now this has not been in the refrigerator. It's still at room temperature. So keep that in mind as well. When I take a piece out, I may have to take out two. There we have it. Now, if you want to come around here and look, you'll see where it weeped. It did not weep in the bottom of the of the dish at all. It's nice and dry down there. It was strictly in between the meringue and the filling. So the next time, um, I think you should beat your meringue while you're cooking your filling so that you can get it on there immediately and get it in the oven. You can tell it's still a beautiful pie. And the meringue still looks good. It's dreamy. Creamy, dreamy coconut. That 
toasted coconut makes it taste even better. Mmm. Best coconut pie ever. So good you don't want to stop eating it. That's how good it is. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.